Hi, everyone. I'd like to start today with a question. How many of you have felt nervous or self-conscious when speaking up? I think that's 100%. <laughs> well, I get it. I've faced my fair share of struggles too, and I know how hard it can be. But fear not, because today I'm going to be talking about how you can own your space, release your creative potential, and speak up to the world with confidence. Wow. Well, over my career with a great band, lots of great bands as a professional percussionist and as a startup founder, I have found three tips that have helped me and I'd be delighted to share those with you in the hope that they can help you too. Leading me into the first hack, I think it's quite relevant because it started right here at school when I was 11 years old, and the drum tutor, Mike, from across the road at the boys' school, came over to see if there were any budding girl drummers amongst us. And immediately, when he was holding the sticks, I was like, oh, that's me, that's me, that's me. But I couldn't say anything, because I was really shy. What did speak, though, was my body. The whole of my body was tingling. It was a full body, yes. And that's why, for six precious years, I spent with Mike up in the music room in the attic, and it was where learning became a refuge after my father passed away. Mike shone a light on my world with his infectious smile and unshakable belief. And we all know belief is a powerful force, especially when we get it from school teachers. I'd like to say that I wouldn't be standing here on this stage today if it weren't for all of my teachers. So this talk is also a testament to teachers and a big thank you. What Mike taught me was that belief allows us to stand in our own space with confidence. What do I mean by standing in our own space with confidence? Well, any performer will tell you that it's about showing up fully in the moment. It's about being present to what's going on in the body and being aware of all the space around you. It's also about something a little bit more. It's about owning your own space that's unique to you and only you. It's like your small part in the universe. When we stand in our space, we're communicating a powerful message to the audience to say, hey, I'm here. I believe I'm worthy of being seen and heard. And I found it helpful to embody that belief. So hack one, is about embodying belief for confidence. I don't think I'd be doing any of you full service if I didn't bring rhythm into this talk. So are you up for doing a little bit of rhythm? Yes, great. Can I invite you all to stand up? Wonderful. Right, I'm going to keep it really easy. I'm going to start a rhythm with a stamp, stamp, clap, and I'm going to ask you to listen and join in. Okay, so it's... If you join in... Ooh, that sounds good. Great. Keep that going. Feel it in your body. Great. Right, keep going. I'm going to say some words, and I'd like you to copy me. Listen. Here we go. I'm seen. I'm heard. I'm enough. Join in. I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm enough. Great, shout it out loud. I'm seen, I'm heard. Believe it, feel it in the body. I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm enough. Keep going. I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm enough. A little bit faster. I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm enough. A bit faster and louder. I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm enough. Believe it one more time. I'm seen. I'm heard. I'm enough. Two, 
three, four, and stop. Feel that in your body. Feel that belief in your body. It's tingling, right? The cells are tingling. Feel it. Own it. You know it. You felt it before. It's so known. So confidence isn't just in the mind. It's a mind-body connection. So hack number one. What do you do with that? What do you do with this feeling now that you've got it? You anchor it. You anchor it. You anchor the belief so you can call on it at any given moment. So whether it's for an interview or a talk, you can anchor it. The way you do it is a quick... Try it. And again. I want you to really feel it when you do it. Again. And again. Okay, stop. Call on belief. Anchor it now. Beautiful. Great. And I did that literally as I was walking on stage today, and, and it works a treat. Thank you so much. You may all sit down. So once you've got that, you can practice it and embed it and keep on doing it again and again and again. Okay, so you've drummed in that confidence. You're standing in your own space. What now? Well, that's hack number two. And hack number two is creating a two-way channel for creativity to flow. What does that mean? Well, to explain that, I'm going to use two examples from my music career. And the first one was when I started out back in the 90s, a long time ago. And I was touring around the world, very luckily, with pop bands. And... I was a British Asian female drummer in a very male dominated music industry. Whoa, ah, there were a lot of challenges there. Uh, for example, uh, I get comments of, oh gosh, how can you be allowed out? You know, you're just a young girl, Indian girl, how do you know what to play and how to play? All sorts of stuff. And uh, I really did have to overcome a lot, still do. Uh, but back then, it was really, really hard. Uh, I felt a longing to connect a longing to connect with other females, other people who were similar to me. So I was really lucky to be approached by a band called Sister India, who represented the cream of British Asian female talent. And we certainly made ourselves seen and heard, that's for sure. Won't go on about that too much for now. What we did though, through our connection and sense of togetherness, we were able to overcome some of those biases. And we were also able to pave the way for future generations that now exist today. So when I was thinking about Hack 2, I knew that there was something about this connection piece and togetherness. And so the second example of my music career uh, was when it all really became clear. And that was when uh, I've been very humbled to perform with the UK band Faithless for 13 years of my career. And I would like you to imagine something. You see these screaming faces on the screen. I want you to imagine that you're on the stage. Yeah, you're on the stage and there's 100,000 people screaming at you, screaming with joy. Okay, so that was me on stage with my percussion rack, Andy, the drummer, and I are playing perfectly in time, in sync completely. The band are creating a sound that's never been heard before. It's punk, it's raw, it's legendary. But I'm having a tough time. And I don't know how many of you can relate to this, but there are voices of doubt inside the mind. Oh, am I really in time? I'm worrying about, the, the, I'm having pressure of, how am I coming across to everybody? Uh, I, am, am I being okay? Am I communicating well? Am I performing well? Uh, it, was, it was just, yeah, like a fog. And then, as I was looking out on the faces, hundreds and thousands of faces, the penny dropped. And I realized, oh my gosh. It's not about me. It's about them. It's about connecting with them. Because have you ever seen it when someone's face in front of you is so alive and open and free? It's amazing, isn't it? It's absolutely amazing. Well, when you see that with hundreds and thousands of people, it's literally like witnessing spirit. And you see everyone dissolving into 
togetherness, togetherness. That was the key. And when I got it, my goodness, did I change as a performer. So before I'd had my percussion rig all closed off, now I'd opened it out. I was jumping around the stage like a badass because I'd got a new kind of confidence I'd never felt before. And so what did I see? I saw that performance and confidence isn't just about standing here. It's about this two-way channel where creativity can flow, where that creative force can flow through. So remember, hack number two was, well, my first bit of the hack is to listen intuitively to create a safe space. What do I mean by that? Well, some of us think we're really good listeners. Listen intuitively with your body, with your intuition. We've all got it. But by doing that, we create a safe space for everyone to be seen and heard. And then magic happens. And next up, notice and mirror. Notice and mirror. So what I mean by that is notice when someone's face lights up and tell them. Tell them what it means to you. And by doing so, you mirror back their greatness. And when you do these two things, a new confidence can flow. All right, so we've had hack one. We've had hack two. Oh, gosh, it's all going so well, isn't it? What's hack three? Right, hack three is when things don't go quite so well, and it's about practicing failure. I learned to do that a lot when... I changed track. I had an idea for a product, and I put it out. I founded a startup, uh, as you do, and I was absolutely petrified. Because suddenly, I was in a completely different environment. I was pitching to investors, board members, and I had to use my real voice. I'd got no heart, drums to hide behind. And so, yeah, I was absolutely terrified. I had 20 years of performance experience by this point. It didn't matter. I totally, totally freaked out. So at that time, I began to think about a couple of questions. Firstly, why is it that for some of us, when we're put under the spotlight, it's really hard to talk about ourselves? Yeah, I see nodding heads. Yeah. What is it that we feel and fear? Rejection? Judgment? Failure? Sadly, my business didn't work. And all the pressure of doing this and running my business and trying to work all of that out, it got too much and I had to stop. Experiencing failure with something that you're really passionate about is hard. It's really hard. And it took me three years to get over it. How did I do that? Well, I dug deep and I asked for help. I gathered friends and family around me um, and I really had to come out of my shell. I looked at shame and I thought, gosh, do you know what? There's no shame in failure. The shame is to not get back up and do it all over again. And I looked at how I could use that experience to help other people do similar things to me and get over similar fears. And that's why I now coach. And I coach hundreds of founders and underrepresented individuals to pitch successfully for investment, to get out of their own way, to create unshakable belief, and to deliver speeches and talks like badasses. <laughs> so, what is hack number three then? It's really, really simple. It's this. How do you do it? You fail. You dig deep. You ask for help. You fail again. You dig deep. You ask for help. You fail. You ask. You fail. You ask until eventually you succeed and you will. I love this Michael Jordan quote. I failed over and over and over again in my life and that is why I succeed. So embracing failure, through that we can learn to develop a deep empathy for people and we can share our learnings. 
so that eventually a new confidence is born. To finish up then, when you commit to these three hacks, embodying belief and confidence, creating a two-way channel for creativity and practicing failure, I promise you, you will see the incredible impact it has on your ability to speak up in the world. Use these hacks as golden nuggets whenever you need them, whether it's from an interview, a talk, or just in daily life. Whatever you do, say a big yes to doing them. Because I promise you, for you and for all of us in the rest of the universe, it will be worth it. I'd like to finish with some lyrics from faithless singer and dear friend of mine, Maxi Jazz, who passed away recently. I see genius in everybody. To perceive it in ourselves is the difficulty. But your individuality overflows with quality. It manifests solidly if you believe. Thank you.